Isn't that lovely? Not a very exciting one, this one. It's why they've not been too frequent recently, because I've been trying to trying to figure out what to do. The, the pedal one took quite a long time and a load of things delayed it. So I didn't want to start things in between because then I'd have to do two of these at once, but then it was slowing down this. So I'm kind of just doing it anyway. I want to get the rear subframe to a point where I can put it on the car. Obviously the subframe's reinforced and it's cleaned, but it didn't go too well at the zinc platers. As you can just about see down there. But they didn't want to put it in their acid tanks. The acid will get stuck in the cavities and then it would rot out from the inside. They didn't want to risk it, which is fair enough. They're really good guys down there, so I'm just going to paint them, I think. I'm going to wait until it's sunny, open the door, and then just, just paint them by there with, I think I've got some wrap to left somewhere, and some black satin. Really don't want to powder coat them. What they have done is I've got all the bolts for the rear subframe that's all clean. So that's, that's what we've got. What we haven't got is most of it, really. I've got a two-way diff that I need to put in the casing. So to do that, I think I need to like turn it and put engineer's blue on it and check it all. I don't know. I'll get the Nissan manual and then swap that around. So that'll be part of it. And then the other one is the Atessa pump. This is where I get a load of transmission fluid all over my bench. Anyway, this is the Atessa pump. And basically it pumps the Atessa, obviously. No, what it does, assuming there's some, some non-Skyline people watching this, the four-wheel drive on Skylines is controlled by oil pressure. It's got almost a automatic transmission-like transfer case. And then you use oil pressure to control how much torque is going to the front. Most of the time it's none until you start to get a little bit leery and then it's an amount. Um, and this guy bolts on top of the rear diff, gets fluid from a reservoir in the boot and then shoots it forwards to the transfer case. But it's kind of... It's kind of mank, right? I think first of all, just I'll just see how much it cleans, you know, like traditional cleaning. I don't really, it's got like a pressurized nitrogen canister and all sorts of stuff. If I can. If I can get away with just cleaning it, maybe just putting some paint over the top of it and then leaving it as that, I think I'll be happy enough. See, it's not exciting, is it? your battles huh I think that's pretty good I just I put some protective stuff on the rest of it got that sticker back on which was just on the bench I think Shane left it there which is handy um, and then that'll do wasn't it I 
That's alright. No one's ever going to see it. But I, th I think that's pretty clean. I think that's a pretty good job. Better than stripping it all apart and spending 400 quid on a new nitrogen canister anyway. I did look at the hoses. Loads of them are all kind of rusty and, well, the, the fittings on them anyway. So I'm just going to make new out of braided stuff. The Group A cars had a braided line going from here to the transfer case. So I expect the rest of them were probably just banjos and braided. So I'll do that out of PTFE stuff. So the next job is I need to look to paint the subframes. I took these to the zinc platers and they said, the first guy kind of said, oh, that's too dirty to put in the tanks um, because the, it's not very good at taking paint off. So I was like, all right. So I got them sandblasted, but they came out really rough, which would have looked awful when I put zinc on them. So then I spent hours smoothing them all off so they're nice and smooth and then took them back to the zinc platers to find out that the acid would just rot out the inside so now I've got to rough them back up again so I can paint it. Difficult, isn't it, after you've had a pint? I kind of just want to have more pints. Yeah. It's always been my problem, though. <laughs> Four to one. Pints to... Pints to progress. sure how good this will be because that's going in the background. I came down yesterday to get this primer on and it was raining outside and I need these doors open to be able to spray it so we had to go to the pub instead and then came back and got the primer on. Tried to keep it as warm as possible but the paint's still a little bit soft but I can do this and then the surfacer and then the top coat all as wet on wet so I don't have to do any more prep work. I'm going to try and get it as warm as possible with the space heater and then just try and get all of the paint on today.
pretty good, huh? I'm really happy with that. It's a bit shinier than I thought it was going to be, but that's just because I got a good amount of paint on it. I just think it's so much better than powder coating. Got a good epoxy on there, a good surfacer, and then a good few coats of top. It just looks great. I'm going to leave them hanging up here, I think, for a, for a few days, because it's quite cold in here, and I want this to go really hard. And there's no, there's no benefit to taking it off yet. I'm just going to bolt the back one to the car, and then all the other bits will bolt to that, rather than trying to put everything on it and then get something really heavy to attach to the car, because it's quite difficult to get on now, now that there's no play in any of those. That's good, I'm happy, I'm really happy for once actually. So let's go and have a quick look at the diff. I think I'm just gonna do a, see what it's like at the moment to check it's good before I take it apart and then we'll, we'll take it apart the next one. I've got a new diff to go in here. Um, it, they are actually two way from standard but the preload isn't very high. So I got a, I think it's a cars diff, it's two way and then you, you can adjust the preload by flipping some of the plates over if you want to. But I think I'll just chuck it in as is to begin with and we'll just see what it's like. So to put it in, I'm going to use the same crown wheel and pinion and the, the races of the bearings will be the same. So hopefully I won't actually have to change any of the shims, but I just want to check what all the measurements are before I swap it over. So if they're wrong after I've swapped it over, I know if it was me, i.e. changing the diff, or if it's always been like that. Easy one first, right? That's not good, is it? It's a little bit over standard value, but at least we know that now. So hopefully there's some washers in the back of here that will let us move it over just slightly to one side and we'll just have to vibe it out, I guess. So that's not good either, that's three times over the limit. It's supposed to be 0 0.05 and that's 0 0.15. All right, next. Okay, so on the drive side, a lot of those are looking, they're looking really good. They're centered along it, which is what they're supposed to be. You do get the odd one though, that's kind of like more on the toe maybe, but it's pretty good, generally. So the drive side's okay. And then in terms of the back side, the back side's very similar, more on the inside than the outside slightly, but nothing you'd do anything about. There we go. Can you tell that I haven't rebuilt a diff before? It's fairly obvious, isn't it? Um, I don't know, I don't think I've got the right marking stuff, but at least I've got loads of blue marking stuff now that makes me feel like a grown up. I think I'm, I'm going to get something else, so I'll get that for the actual rebuild of it. I'm not too happy that it's outside of that it's outside of the specs on the sheet. It was quite, I don't know, it is what it is, isn't it? I'll try and I'll try and make it as good as possible because it's it's very solid mounted now. So it, a load of backlash isn't going to be that pleasant, is it? That's it. I don't. I, I think it turned out all right. Right. Things got painted. They're a nice colour. We did something at the beginning that I can't remember anymore. The the diffs kind of about to be in bits, so that's all right. We've just got to roll on to the next one, don't we? That's, um, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna rebuild the diff, but I'm also gonna make a new back cover for it. I got some things laser cut, cause I'm into that, aren't I? So I need to weld all that together and it should extend the back of it a bit so I don't burn any oil. I don't know how long this one will be. Could be ages. If you just subscribe, then it'll, it'll pop up, I guess. You probably have to do more. Anyway, see you in the next one.